everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here. I am an educator from Houston, Texas and this weekend I participated in my very first Dewey's 24 hour readathon. I loved it. I thought it had a beautiful, open, diverse community. You could participate on Instagram, you could participate on Twitter, you could do Goodreads, their website. It was everything or as little as you wanted to put into it. Um, they made me feel so relaxed and I don't know, I just really, really loved it. Um, I didn't take it as seriously as I have to read for 24 hours straight. Um, although I did try my best to like stay here and read. I took a couple of breaks um, to get something to eat and um, some other things, but like it was just a really amazing experience. I'm Hufflepuff, so I know it was about the community, but I don't know, I just, I loved it. So I will definitely be participating in more. But I wanted to make the intro uh, clip first because when I rolled it, I put on no makeup that day. I stayed in like loungewear and everything. And my channel is still new, I have just a few subscribers. So I just wanted to come on here first and kind of introduce the video before you see all the like coverage. I didn't take a lot of like b-roll of me reading this time. Um, I'm getting better at it but still not like wanting to set the camera up for it. Um, but yeah, so my plan, and I did make an, a plan for this readathon, was to change it up every hour or every other hour, if you will, on what I was reading. And I found that when I made a schedule for myself, I was really pumped. Um, in fact, I'll show you. So during quarantine, I've made daily schedules and lists of things to do in this journal that I have here. And so I did go through and make an hourly um, journal of what I wanted to read. I have a huge, okay, I have multiple huge stacks of picture books that I've gotten um, from different festivals and orders and things that I've done um, with teaching that I really want to get through and so this was the time that I planned to do that so that's why you see a lot. My initial goal was to read a picture book at the beginning of the hour and then continue reading one of my longer books but I found that I kind of took that time to check into social media to update my bullet journal and just kind of keep the momentum going. So I will show you that. I started a reading bullet journal mostly because um, I know her name is Chloe Keeps One and I do watch her videos, um, but it's very simple. And again, I just started it. I just bought it with the quarantine. I have my um, library of books that I've read and my codes are down here. I color code them by genre. And I just found that image on Pinterest and copied it. For April, I have my um, coloring the days that I read. Then I have my books that I finished and I color code them again over here and mark the stars. However, <laughs> because of this readathon and I was doing picture books, I was doing the books that I purchased down here but found I had to keep going. So I can only read four more books this month. So I'm going to work on the bigger books. So I did a yearathon in one of my previous videos. It didn't do very well on that. Um, but then I did keep up with the Dewey's 24 hour. These are the books that I had planned on my schedule to read and you can see which ones I actually accomplished in black. But I did keep track of my word count and I read 578 pages um, in that 24 hours. I probably read closer to like 12 hours. When you counted it up, I don't do the timer. I am not at that level yet. I think it'd be interesting to do the timer, but I use my phone for so many other things. I don't know. Um, but again, interested in that one time. But I figured 578, most of that was picture books and then a graphic novel. But still, I thought it was a good number. I have found that I am a very slow reader compared to many people online, but it doesn't bother me. All right, so I'm actually going to film now exactly what I read in all of the books. Um, not that I plan to read, but that I did read, but I'm gonna go ahead and loop this after the coverage of my reading. So I'm gonna insert in all my footage of me reading, 
and explaining that and then I will cut back here and show you and tell you uh, the books that I read. All right, enjoy. Good morning. It is 6.59 and it is time for Dewey's 24 hour readathon. I am going to read for 24 hours. I didn't get a good amount of sleep last night so I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some naps in here somewhere today. But I have my schedule that I'll show you later planned um, every hour of what I'm gonna read. And so I'm thinking if I get, you know, through the first half of the hour, maybe I could like snooze. Um, I've got some picture books lined up during the day, so I'm thinking if I could read that, but here we go. Alright, so this first hour, I'm gonna read A Court of Mist and Fury. I am right smack dab in the middle of the book, and so my plan is to read this for the first hour to get me going, but then when I'm doing my picture books, after I read those picture books, I'm then going to read this the second half of the hour. So I probably won't get this finished today, but I'm hoping to at least get to like 75% of the book. So it's still quite a few hundred pages, but we shall see. Probably gonna get up and get some coffee, but I might just stay here and read the first hour in bed since it's so early. And then um, I need to check on Goodreads and Twitter for some spreads. All right, I got a page done in Mist and Fury, but I am about to go into the second hour, and oh, something would light up a little. So this is my schedule that I made for myself. So it starts on some things I really need to read, and then it grabs some picture books throughout the day, and I've got them all here some light coming through so I'm about to do some Bible reading. Um, I read the message translation when I'm just looking to like read uh, the Bible. It's awesome. I've got my reading bullet journal here. I've got some page flags, my glasses cleaner, a candle, some music if I want to put some on. I've got my ASMR. Um, if I want to turn that on, I figure that might be later. Um, I only have one appointment at noon. I think I'm gonna go get some breakfast in an hour or two, but I found that I'm gonna read the first 50 minutes of the hour and then the last 10 minutes is gonna be break for coffee or bathroom or errands or whatever. So uh, here's going into hour two. Uh, my plan was to work on the one and only. The blue sticky note is halfway, so I'm almost there. Um, it's a weird book. It's got football references, but I'm not sure I like how she talks about football, but um, I don't usually DNF books very well. So um, Ellie and I are going to go get some breakfast to have a coupon for a buy one get one free breakfast sandwich. So um, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to take my book with me in case there's a long line or a long wait. Um, but I'm going to go through the drive through and get some breakfast and then keep plugging away at my reading.
you guys I have my first five star rating for Dewey's 24 hour readathon and that is Entango Makes 3. It's really hard as an elementary educator to have an arsenal of titles to recommend when you're trying to help define families and how families come in different sizes and shapes. Um, you To talk about same-sex marriage is to introduce the sex part of same sex and it's almost more than gender it's sexual orientation so in elementary school it's really a big faux pas and principals usually aren't going to be very open to it however in this book it's a true story the penguins live in central park zoo and the way that they describe how the two males kind of become a couple is just how um, you know they spend time together and then they made a nest and sat on a rock because all the other penguins were doing it until the zookeeper ends up giving them an uh, un a fertilized egg that wasn't going to be cared for and they ended up caring for it and the little baby became tango that they named so anyway this was so beautifully written it's very simple so i think that it will be great for even you know primary pre-k kind of classrooms um but yeah it, there's a lot of white space in the page but again it ends on an author's note and information that these penguins are at the um, central park zoo so there's no denying um that it exists and so it's just really well done it does have a reward uh an award over there but what an amazing resource for teachers to have especially when they have students in their classroom who may have same-sex parents and how um, kids navigate that when you know a lot of students talk about families and play family and things like that so I am so excited I finally got to this and yes five stars All right, it's 2.20, so we're heading into, it's been, what, seven hours now? So I think this is hour eight they posted on Twitter. Um, I'm super pumped now that I have my first five-star read down. Um, I'm now reading The People Shall Continue this hour. Um, I got this from firstbook.org, uh, just like I did um and then there was tango i just made some fresh coffee i opened up a new creamer um with quarantine and everything <laughs> i've been trying different creamers so i've got like a mocha caramel um creamer which it's a little chocolate i don't really like chocolatey in my coffee but that's okay my phone is charging and i've got the notifications set on um on twitter and on goodreads i'm not doing the instagram ch picture challenges just because that takes me too much time to kind of think through it and go through all my books and i didn't do it ahead of time of course because why and um i'm not really great on goodreads on my phone but i am logging what i'm reading i'm also ke keeping a page count and then i updated my reading bullet journal just now with my update on and through a uh, what three makes tango and tango makes three um so anyway it stopped raining and hailing so i'm gonna enjoy this book my goal is after finishing the picture book at the top of well top ish of the hour to then continue on some of the longer books so i still need to finish the chapter i was on for emotional poverty i still need a couple chapters left in the book of john and then of course i have half of um a court of mist and fury and about 60 percent of the one and only so um, i'm trying to do like a little book first and then carrying through the hour and, and one of the longer goals so we'll see it is almost 6 p.m so we're heading towards halfway there which is really scary <laughs> um however 
I am just picking up some pizza because everybody on Twitter was posting their pizza. I thought about delivery, but my complex is not easy to navigate. Say hi, every Sue. Hi. And Ellie needed to get out of the house. It keeps like raining and then the sun and raining in the sun. And so we haven't gone out on a long walk because then it starts raining again. Um, so I was trying to kind of get her um, out of the house as well. So let me show you what I chose for dinner tonight. So I really love this place and I'll show you a picture when we get home of the pizza that I ordered. Um, but this is a great company. It's a great restaurant inside. So yeah, I'm excited. Here we go. Not a cute note. Oh, yes. Deep dish pizza. Pepperoni, sausage, and green olives. My fave. Yum. Um, I've been reading picture books, which I'll show you in the wrap up. Um, I didn't want to come on like every hour and I thought I would have a lot of time in between to work on Mist and Fury or something but I'm actually not. I haven't touched that since like 7.50 this morning but I am going to read uh, They Called Us Enemy, a graphic novel by George Takei. Um, I got to hear him talk at NCTE in Baltimore this year and it was amazing. I'm having a lot of fun on Twitter uh, with the Readathon group. And um, I just turned on an ASMR. I've got my lights on on the patio. I was reading out there, but talked to my neighbor for a good 30, 45 minutes because he's moving out. I've got my water because I figured I would probably want to drink some coffee later, but I don't want to completely dehydrate myself. So I filled up on some water. Ellie's chilling out um, beside me on the couch. I've got a blanket. I've got a pillow. Um, if I do feel like snoozing, I'm going to, but I will set a timer just to like check in and see at the top of the hour if I want to continue to read. Um, I really like the feel of everybody on Twitter. Like it's very laid back, do what you can, um, take a rest when you need it, eat when you need to. And I just love the feel of this readathon. Um, you know, my inner drive does enough and my list of books I wanted to get through does enough. I am taking time to go through my bullet journal after I finish each picture book and take a picture for Instagram, etc. So I'm kind of going slower, but with the rain and everything going on, it's it's been a, it's been a nice day. I can see why people really enjoy this. So anyway, I'm going to work on this graphic novel and um, read for another hour. Okay guys, I've made it to midnight. I um, think I read Beauty and the Beast, Cynthia Rylance, Cynthia Rylance uh, retelling that I think came out last year, probably when Emma Watson's movie came out, to be honest. Um, I gave it three stars. I'm reading, I'm making my way through George Takai's They Called Us an Enemy, um, kind of the second half of the hour, but I'm losing steam. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to keep going. I um, went on Twitter for a minute and it kind of helped, but I had to close my eyes already a little and just kind of take a cat nap, which worked. I had a piece of dark chocolate to see if maybe that would help, but it probably just is what's making me more tired. But um, I have another picture book, and I may try to finish They Called Us an Enemy, or They Called Us Enemy. Um, but I don't know, Ellie's resumed her
She's got her snore on, so um, we'll see. I may move to the bed, but if I go to my bedroom, <laughs> I probably won't wake up. Um, but I, like I said, I, I might set some alarms or something. But anyway, this is the hard part, and um, I think next time I might do what other people do, where they start, you know, at like midnight and try to make it to midnight. Um, but now that it's quiet and everything, and I've already been up since 7 a.m. and didn't get a lot of sleep last night, I can tell my hours are limited. So we shall see. I just thought I'd update you. This may be the last video before my wrap up. So if that's true, good night. <laughs> um, if not, I'll talk to you in a couple of hours maybe. Alright, so let me show you the books that I attempted to read or read during this readathon. The first one that I started with is A Court of Mist and Fury. As you can tell, I'm a little over halfway through. Uh, if you look at my sticky notes, I'm really enjoying this. I have found that um, I use Amazon Prime Radio and I um, listen to the Hans Zimmer movie soundtrack radio station while reading my fantasy fiction and it's amazing. I've even made a playlist of songs that fit in really good so I have my headphones on and I like immerse myself in this world. I only read like a chapter um, during the actual Dewey's readathon. Um, again, my plan was to read a picture book for like the first 20 minutes of the hour and then read this for the last 30, but found that my mind wasn't there to kind of flip back and forth. I like to kind of enter this world and stay there. Um, but I am loving this book. If you haven't read this series and you are an adult, it is not YA. <laughs> Um, you will enjoy it just as much. I know they put her at like 19 years old, but really this to me is, is also adult fantasy and it's really great, especially if you love a female heroine. I'm still working my way through the one and only. This was my worst rated book on my TBR um, with the average reading on Goodreads. As you can see, I am almost halfway through. The blue sticky note is halfway through, so I'm almost there. This is about a girl in her early to mid 30s who takes a new job as a sports reporter. She is obsessed with football and her local college's head coach, who's 55 years old. His wife just died, but somehow she finds herself pining over him. But to make things more interesting, she actually just scored a relationship with the Dallas Cowboys head quarterback who she went to college with. So, um, juicy, confusing. I don't DNF books very often, so I'm con gonna continue through it and then I'll probably be unhauling it. Um, but again, it is Texas. They do reference UT, which I went to, hook em horns, and it's football. So, um, I, I don't know. I wanna see where it goes. I mean, how often do 30 year olds fall in love with 55 year olds who's the dad of their best friend and mentor? I don't know. During this, I also was reading through Emotional Poverty. This is a book that my principal had us read over the summer, but I did not finish. I am on page 115, but there's really only like 150 pages, so I'm actually not that far down. Um, I ended up loving this chapter. I was reading chapter seven that talks about kind of our emotional balance as a teacher in the classroom and how that actually has an impact on the behavior in the classroom. So it just, again, puts a little bit of responsibility on the teacher uh, when handling discipline and students who are behaving badly, if you will. But I loved this section and it talked about um, why we feel so tired all the time and just as we get older the level of responsibility rises but our energy biologically gets slower or um, lessens and so what's happening is is we when we accept all these responsibilities it's because we have better energy but then as we get older our energy dies off but our responsibilities keep um, keep pace with 
exponentially growing and so we end up in this time where we have all these other things happening to us um, but we don't have the energy to do it all so anyway this is by uh, Dr. Ruby Payne she is not a favorite author of mine um, the previous chapter that I was reading weeks ago actually enraged me because she put her own political stuff into talking about children and I hate that but this chapter I am loving there were it's not a perfect chapter but that I guess I should say that section was really powerful for me in the early morning hours I also tried to complete the book of John in the Bible I read the message translation because it's just very literary and um almost poetic and so it's a little easier to understand i've never read the gospel before but the reason that i had started this was because years ago i picked up the case of christ, the case for christ years ago i picked up the case for christ before it was going to be a movie i have not seen the movie yet um it didn't do really well at the box office not that a lot of christian movies do um but this is going to be this is the book that's been on the currently reading of goodreads for like three years now I believe since 2017 but it's my goal during um quarantine and then just i guess going into summer to uh complete this and i've got my bible here um to read when it does quote scripture and things of that sort so I had put this to read the last couple of hours of the readathon, but I did not get through it. And I ended up stopping at chapter 18, I believe. And I think there were 20 or 21 chapters of John. So I ended up completing the Sunday. But again, um, having the message translation is something that the pastor at my church uh, quotes from. And so I just liked it and picked it up. And I found that. Um, it helps reading the Bible because reading the Bible is really tricky um, and can be a very difficult task. Um, I found that depending on the translation, but this has really helped me and it's really beautiful. So um, yes, I read on that in the morning. I guess I'm just going to take you through the picture books that I read in order. So the first one I read is Entango Makes Three. Um, I got this from First Book Marketplace, so it did come with the audio, but I did not listen to it. But this tells the true story of two male penguins at the Central Park Zoo in New York City. And they did everything together and kind of made a couple or um, matched up at the same time that the male and the female penguins did however um, they ended up building a nest like all of the others and sat on rocks instead of the other couples who were sitting on an actual egg well one of the couples had an extra egg and so the zookeeper puts it in their nest and they raise it and the little baby comes out named tango it's a really neat way to introduce young children in the same-sex marriages without talking anything about sexuality. It just talks about how their behaviors mirrored the other male-female couples. And I love the fact that this is a true story. It's told very tastefully because um, I know introducing young children into um, same-sex marriages um, can be tricky and some of the parents in my community don't feel comfortable with it and a lot of their opinions are it's up to them of uh, and the parents rights to introduce that to students however as teachers and some of the advocacy work I do it's how can we validate the students in our classrooms who have same-sex parents this is a great way to do that it's very scientific um, and just factually based and there's no there's not even a lot of like advocacy talk. It's just the tale of two male penguins who helped raise this little chick named um, Tango and their family of three. And I love that you can go see them at the Central Park Zoo, which I really wanna do when all of this mess stops. The next book uh, that I read is We, uh, sorry, The People Shall Continue. Uh, this is the 40th anniversary edition, so that kind of puts it into perspective about um, how long this book has been out. It's by Simon Ortiz and illustrated by Cheryl Graves, and they both 
um, give their lineage and tribal information, uh, which is really important for the Own Voices campaign. Uh, it is told in verse, but it's again just told very factually, not putting a lot of blame. Um, on the white settlers like it's again it's one of those this is what happened um not everybody acted correctly in colonial america that there are um some really atrocious things that happened in our history um, but giving that power back to the people it doesn't use the word indigenous it it just uses the people so i do think this would be a good gt or gifted um activity for them to really bring out what it means and almost simplify the language um, but yes any child could read it it's a great story to again bring out when you're trying to bring some own voices into your classroom and add that diversity um, and again show a true portrait of american history i'm gonna have to clean up all these books after this the next book I read is one of my all-time favorite books. It's Tomas and the Library Lady. This is about a boy um, who's uh, the son of migrant workers. And um, he goes to the library and this really kind library lady, uh, library lady gives him books uh, to read. He reads then to his family and his grandfather when he gets home. And she even checks them out under her name because he, I guess, couldn't get a card because he doesn't have, you know, the residency or whatever uh, that most library libraries require because um, they were just I believe in Iowa to um, do farm work for the crops during a certain time of the year I believe winter no not obviously not winter so it must be summer um, but anyway this is a biography of Tomas Rivera which that's him right there because she won the uh, Tomas Rivera Mexican American Children's Book Award. I got to meet Pat Mora last year at the San Antonio Book Festival. Amazing woman, heart set on advocacy and access for all students, especially in Texas. I didn't have this book and she was promoting her adult book that came out last year. So I was like in tears. I've had a million copies of these, but I guess I probably left them in my classroom or gave them to other teachers or, um, you know, they were just nasty copies. So when I saw this, I grabbed me a new copy. And Miss Mora, I hope, 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 I will see you at a book festival soon so I can get that signed. I also read Firebird. This one's by Ballerina uh, Misty Copeland and illustrated by Christopher Myers, who is an amazing African-American artiste. He does some really amazing things. Um, this won the Ezra Jack Keats Honor Book and a Coretta Scott King winner. Um, but it tells the story in verse. Um, uh, well, it doesn't really tell a story. It mostly talks to... Um, Misty Copeland's kind of talking to this young ballerina who wants to be like her. So as you can see, it's just beautiful. There's not a lot of words on the page. Um, the poetry kind of throws me off. I, my poetry is not my strength. And so I'm not sure I got the full force of this, but I did end up on YouTube for a good 20 minutes looking at Misty Copeland um, dancing and seeing if I could find something on Firebird, which I could not. Um, so obviously a lot of that is copywritten, but man, what an amazing person. So um, I definitely want to watch her movie. I know it came out. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or Netflix. Um, I'll have to look, but yeah, a beautiful book. So if you're looking to put um, books in your classroom that have representation, Misty Copeland, this is a, an amazing one, African-American uh, ballerina and, and many of her interviews on TV talk about how when you look at a studio of ballerinas, there's a ridiculously low number of, of African-American and Latinx people in those companies. So, um, hopefully advocating for more representation in the future. Then I read The Great Fuzz Frenzy. I love this one. This copy of mine is signed 
from the illustrator. I got to meet uh, Susan Stevens Crummel earlier this school year. I believe in October she came. This is one of my favorite books. It reminds me of Dr. Seuss's The Sneetches because the dog <laughs> drops the tennis ball down into the prairie dog hole and they all start taking the fuzz and making cool things out of it. But then of course people start freaking out because they didn't get enough fuzz and we need fuzz. And so then someone takes it all but then somebody steals anyway it's it's super fun and then I don't know for some people who like um, fun books in the classroom the kids always love that the book folds out um, vertically so anyway but that does mean that if it's in your classroom it's gonna break and bend and you're gonna have it taped together so this is my personal copy Then I read <laughs> We Don't Need Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins. I love him. I got to meet him a couple years ago at the Texas Book Festival. His Twitter account is flawless. You need to go follow him. Not flawless, but he's very funny. And this book is very, very, very funny. I gave it five stars. I loved it. Um, I can't wait for the new one that's coming out, I believe, in July or October of this year. This is so funny. This little girl is in pre-k kindergarten and she starts class but she's a t-rex so on the first day she eats all of her classmates but the teacher makes her spit them out and so she's just learning how to make friends and I thought it'd be a really amazing thing in a primary classroom to talk about things we do when we want to make friends and, and things not to do if we want to be friends with our classmates. Then probably my favorite book that I read um, that does not have an ISBN number so it did not count on Goodreads is Ellie's Adventure in Pat Petlandia. Now if you don't know my dog is named Ellie and that's right it was done on purpose so the book was even dedicated to me and if you look it is personalized with me in here as well there's me so this is one of those instagram uh things that you can buy this is what ellie looks like and oh i gotta show you my favorite page though before i wrap it up isn't that beautiful i got this for christmas from my mom i absolutely love it ellie and i are best pals <laughs> um I am super impressed. I know there's a lot of like ads that you get on Instagram and Facebook and all that and you never know if the products are legit. Like this is legit. The pictures on here are so bright and the paper is so thick. Like you could even have a toddler reading this and they can't like ruin your pages. And I loved seeing my name on many of the pages. I loved that Ellie's name was there. So I would put this on any gift recommendation that I have for families who are loving their dogs. Even if they're adults, I think they'll love it. The actual plot of the book is that Ellie is um, wanting to be an Instagram or YouTube star and so she leaves me, or leaves her owner and goes off and does it and becomes famous but then realizes that she's super lonely and just wants to curl up with me on the couch and so she ends up coming home. So it's a really sweet tale. It's a great gift idea for your pet owners and um, kids who love pets. Or maybe even to memorialize their pet. I know, um, you know, when you lose that first pet it, it's really hard. Uh, the next book I read was Nerdy Birdie Tweets. Um, this is the second book by Aaron Reynolds um, of Nerdy Birdie and he's got some great interviews on YouTube if you want to look at his book. Nerdy Birdie is best friends with the vulture. They're totally different but they're best friends and what happens is Nerdy Birdie loves to be on his phone and he joins Tweeter um, but finds that he's enjoying having so many you know a thousand friends on Twitter but he stops paying attention to his best friend Vulture and so Vulture's like I'm right here what are you doing um, why do you need to be on your phone so I think this is really good for the new generation of kiddos um, it also did have a little bit of 
what do you call it, um, digital citizenship in here. He takes it, they're used to taking silly pictures back and forth, but Nerdy Birdie actually tweets one of those silly pictures of Vulture, and Vulture's like, hey, that's not cool that you would tweet that. Like, I can tweet my, I can share my silly photos, but you don't have the right to share nasty, you know, or you don't have the right to share silly photos without my consent. So I thought that was really good. I gave it five stars. I loved it. I think it'd be really fun for um, to act it out in front of young children. Like one teacher takes the part of Nerdy Birdie and one takes the part of Vulture. I think it would be amazing. The second to last book that I read was Beauty and the Beast. This is the Cynthia Ryland um, retelling that I believe came out last year, maybe the year before. I think it came out when Emma Watson's Beauty and the Beast, the live action, was coming out. Um, the pictures are really nice. A lot of people call them very Disney-esque illustrations. I mean, um, very beautiful. It is the older version, though, where um, the, the dad is like a merchant trader or something and steals the rose um, that Belle wanted. She's got two um, older sisters. Um, and then he fought the beast falls ill and she comes back and says she loves him so like she tells him she doesn't love him because he proposes and she says no and then comes back and she finds him dying in the snow so none of the Gaston stuff none of that other you know torches or anything like that so not as exciting but I don't know I it's useful for the classroom because it's pretty short like time-wise if you were to read aloud and then you could easily compare with the movie you could compare with the live action you could compare all three you get yourself a crazy Venn diagram going so it opens itself to lots of good media literacy um, and good comparative of different texts telling the same story can open up that line of these are what do you call them um, these are traditional tales, and so different storylines have passed on through. The last picture book and last book that I read before I fell asleep was The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. This is the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. She was on the autism spectrum and um, needed a lot of speech services to um, communicate when she was younger but she ends up being super smart um, and li got kicked out of school when she was really young for throwing a book at a kid I think out of anger or frustration and so she um, ends up going to live on her aunt's farm for a little bit and just starts seeing um, lots of things um, in her brain that could help. I know she designed some sort of um, some help for moving cattle and things of that sort. So there was a movie, um, and I think it was Claire Danes on, I think, Amazon Prime and Hulu. So I thought, hey, I, if I've got some time this week, I may pick up that movie and just see. I know that whoever the actress was won an Academy Award for it, so it must be pretty good. And then I read halfway through and finished on Sunday they called us enemy this is george takei's um what do you call it memoir if you will but put into graphic novel form of course he is most famous for um being on star trek but he is an amazing advocate um i got to see him speak last october uh, in baltimore in 2019 and wow um he does an amazing job of just keeping it real, if you will. Um, this talked about how during World War II, after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, that we actually, yes, the US set up internment camps, which, you know, other people call them concentration camps, and even they do on the back, and that's part of George Takei's message, especially in person, is that they stripped Japanese Americans of their rights and put them in prison. Um, it was imprisonment. There were barbed wire on the gates. They were held up by military. They lost all their property, etc. Um, but it was, it was. I thought it was really well done in that he was only four 
five, six, seven years old, I believe, in those few years. And so he remembers what we remember when we're children and some of the games and things that he thought of, but again, some of the worst things that he saw as well, because those stick in your brain too. But then he also shares some of the stuff that his father kind of shared with him later. It does go into how he got his start on Star Trek as well. Um, it it flips back and forth. It does not stay on one constant timeline, which can be kind of confusing. I'd turn the page and be in another spot in his life. And you understand the artistic choice. So I'm, I, it, it just wasn't like communicated well of that shift. Um, it took you a few minutes and I think it could have been a little bit more clear maybe in some of the design work, but again, I thought it was wonderful. Did a great, I think he did a great job honoring his family and what they went through and really opened my eyes too about, we have to acknowledge what we've done in the US, even the nasty things. It has to be in our textbooks because we have to be able to share with people what we've done so that it's the next time that something like this happens, we don't make the same mistake. And um, the timeline of when, you know, um, was it Ronald Reagan, I believe, was who apologized and they were gonna have, is it called rep reparations? Um, I think they got $20,000 back from if they were had been in prison, but they didn't get the money till like 1991. So only like 50% of the people actually there got any sort of um, apology and or financial pay and still $20,000. I mean, the, they're, they lost all of their land and property. So anyway, that's not what I made this video for, um, but I did, you know, I respect his, um, I respect that message from him. There's Eriku, to her rest. So yes, great book, I gave it five stars. I really felt like it was more like 4.5 because it was kind of difficult at some times to kind of tell where, where is this happening? Um, however, just the message, the history, the memoir, and the power that he even, you know, talks about his book and the creative process that him and his team took to, to make it, I thought was worthy of five stars, especially on Goodreads. So that's what I read during the 24 hour readathon. Again, a bunch of picture books. I was a little jealous because some people were moving through like middle grade and, and YA and even adult books. Um, I don't do audio books. I know I will, I, I can feel myself. I will get there in the next three to five years, but I'm still just not there. Um, and I'm not really sure if I know about the technology and free services on how I can listen to audiobooks. I might talk to my librarian about that, but, um, Anyway, yeah, that's what I did. Again, I loved, loved, loved Dewey's 24 hour readathon. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the hosts. Thank you to all the hosts um, and everybody who volunteered to run Twitter sprints and Instagram sprints and all that kind of stuff. It was one of the funnest times that I've had. Um, I got a lot of people to follow, adult readers as well, love the Facebook group. So yeah, I loved it and I can't wait for the next one. And yeah, that's all from me. So if you have any questions or if you read anything, if you participated on Dewey's 24 hour readathon and was, were on any of the social media platforms, I hope that you will um, put your link down below so I can go and follow you. Uh, feel free to give this video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. It is heroin, right? That sounds weird saying that. Uh, my name is Brandy. I am an adult reader that doesn't read adult things. Um, no, 